What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and today we're talking about the differences between front-end development and back-end development. What are the differences? What do they pay? Where do you learn these digital superpowers? Well, today we're gonna answer all those questions and more. I think a lot of people just starting out learning how to code, how to program, are trying to figure out which road is the right one for them to go down. Where do they start? What's most important? And I think by the end of this video, if you're just getting started, you have a really good understanding of the two and which one's right for you. That rhymed did not mean for that to happen. The front end is commonly referred to as client side development. And that focuses on everything that you see and experience and touch and interact with on a website or an application. On the other side of things, you have the back end, which is commonly referred to as server side development. And that's gonna be things that are more focused on functionality, on data, on algorithms, the things that make the car move instead of on the front end, how the car looks. Since we just use an analogy, and I love analogies, let's use another one to describe it in even more depth. An easy way to think of front-end and back-end development is the way that you might think of your favorite restaurant that you go to. The front-end of the restaurant would be the dining room, the serving staff, the menus that you read, and the food that comes out plated and beautiful and ready for you to eat. It's everything that you see and touch and interact with around you. On the flip side of things, the back-end of the restaurant would be inside the kitchen and the back offices. This is the kitchen staff, the inventory, payroll, taxes, everything that keeps the restaurant operating so you can eat that delicious California roll. Okay, with all the restaurant talk out of the way, let's dig a little bit deeper into front end and back end so we get an even clearer picture. So here's the long definition. Wikipedia defines front end development as the practice of converting data into a graphical interface for users to view and interact with data through digital interaction using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Again, everything you see and touch and interact with. But this encompasses everything on the website or application that you're used to seeing, like layouts and drop downs and menus and buttons and the responsive nature of things. If a front end developer was tasked with building a website or application and had no access to back end development or back end developers, then they would be inevitably creating something that we call a static website. A static website is where all data and information is contained within the front end structure of the site using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It doesn't move, it's static. The core three languages that you'll need to learn if you wanna do front end development is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's take a look at each one of those. HTML stands for the words hypertext markup language, which is a really nerdy way to say information. CSS stands for cascading style sheets, and it does exactly what it sounds like. It creates styles that'll cascade over the entire site or application. This means your layouts, your responsive nature, that awesome button that you just wanna click so badly because it's your favorite color. And lastly, you have JavaScript, which doesn't actually stand for anything. It's actually just an interpretation of a word called ECMAScript, which is then a description. It doesn't really matter. JavaScript is the interactive language that makes things move and change, turn on and off. It's good for contact forms and modal windows, as well as a bunch of other things. If you wanted to think about these three languages in another analogy, you might think of a newspaper. HTML would be the information, the content, pure content that's on that paper. The CSS would represent the layout, the different sizes of headings and body copy, and the JavaScript script would basically turn it into a Harry Potter newspaper. Okay, what is the responsibility of a front end developer? What do they do? Their main focus is the layout and the visual experience and making sure that things work in as many devices and sizes as possible. Some of the other things that a front end dev might do is bug testing and browser testing and setting up reusable workflows and tools that can be used for further projects. Okay, next up, where do you learn front end development? Where do you go to build those superpowers? Well, there's a lot of places that you can go. There are traditional you know, university degrees for front-end development, but there's also physical boot camps that'll send you through in two to three months, online learning, online boot camps, blogs, YouTube videos, books. There's so many ways you can learn front-end development. I'll put some of my favorite ways to learn front-end dev down in the description. I will say, in my opinion, one of the best ways to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is just to build a lot of stuff, just to make a lot of stuff. Projects are by far gonna be one of the most beneficial things for you when you have a goal and you have to overcome certain hurdles to accomplish those goals. So find things that are project-based, in my opinion. All right, lastly, how much can you expect to get paid as a front-end developer? I hate to give that age-old answer, but it really does depend. Depends on where you are, 
what you want out of life, what your experience is, what kind of position or company you're applying for. I know that's a really frustrating answer, but I am gonna offer you some really vague ballpark ranges between a brand new inexperienced front end dev and a really awesome, super talented experienced front end dev. In my experience looking at different job applications and working around in different places, you can expect to be making anywhere on the low end from 60 upwards to 100 to 110, somewhere in there, depending on where you're at and what you're doing. Okay, let's move on to back-end development. What is back-end development? Well, Wikipedia will define back-end development like this. It's the core computational logic of a website, software, or information system. A back-end developer creates components and features that are indirectly accessed by a user through the front-end application or system. So that's a much bigger definition of the version we gave earlier, which is basically the things that are behind the curtain that make everything run. So this might be things like storing and organizing data, creating algorithms and complex logic that make things work on the front end. If that front end developer who is making that static website that we spoke about was to pass off his website to a back end developer, then that static information, that content, would all that data would be removed and abstracted out of the front end languages and into the back end languages and put into a database and stored and managed there for ease of use. There would then be connection points between the front end and the back end, so whenever a request is made by the browser, it would go out to the server because it's the server side, grab what's needed, and come back and fill in the empty space and values. Pretty cool, huh? All right, what languages would a backend developer want to be well-versed in? Ruby, Python, Java, PHP, these are all really common backend languages. And the cool thing is you don't have to learn them all because they all share a lot of commonality between them. In my opinion, no one language is the thing that you need to learn as much as learning how to think like an engineer, learning how to think like a programmer. We're talking basic fundamentals like variables and functions and loops, all those kinds of basics that you can then implement to create complex logic piece by piece. Interesting to note that JavaScript can also be used as a backend language with something like Node.js. It allows you to actually execute JavaScript not just in the browser, but in a backend environment. So that's kind of cool too. What responsibilities does a backend developer have? Well, like we said earlier, a backend developer's responsibilities would focus around creating, managing a database, storing information, making sure everything runs smoothly and is optimized and performant, as well as user information, product information, building out complex algorithms that make operations easier, all of those kinds of tasks. Next question is, where do you learn backend development? Well, it's really similar to front-end development. It's everywhere. There are full college degrees for computer science or web development you can go to physical boot camps for three months and come out speaking Ruby or Python fluently. You can also do online courses. There's books, there's tons of YouTube videos, and I'll put some of my favorites down in the description. Lastly, what can you expect to get paid as a backend developer? Unfortunately, again, it does depend based on all those variables we spoke about before, location, experience, skill set, all those kinds of things. But I will again throw out some really basic ballpark ranges for developers starting from a junior backend developer all the way up to a senior backend developer. On the low side of things, it's similar to front-end development. You could expect to find an entry-level position around 50 or 60, and the high levels kind of reaching that six-figure value of 100, maybe 110, and even upwards of 120 or 30, depending on where you are and what your skill set and experience is. So which one's for you? Front-end development? Back-end development? Well, it kind of depends on the type of person that you are. If you like working with layouts, really care about the experience that people have, like problem-solving visual things and seeing things come to life, maybe you dig newspapers, then maybe front-end development would be for you. If you're really into data and math and algorithms and making complex things more optimized, do you dig Rubik's Cubes? Did you take toys apart when you were a kid? Maybe back-end development. And lastly, I will say that there is such a thing as a full-stack developer, which would be somebody who has skill sets rooted in both front and back-end development and is able to take a project from start to finish all by themselves. And I'll say that those are highly sought-after individuals because they're highly valuable to companies and to people. Well, that's it. Those are the differences between front-end development and back-end development. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell icon down below so you know when another video like this one comes out. Make sure to check the description down below for all those helpful links. And if you have any questions, if I didn't clarify something, leave those down in the comments and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. I hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing stuff, making amazing stuff, and choosing the right path for you. I'll see you in the next one.